Hello everyone, uh, back again with another video. This time we are working with a closed system exergy problem. Uh, this one is 7.30 in the 8th edition. Uh, these values right here are the ones that we're going to be working with today. Uh, 0.5 kilograms, pressures, temperatures, uh, a specific heat, and it, the working fluid is CO2. In this problem we have a rigid insulated tank uh, that is being spun by a paddle wheel to reach state 2 and inside of it is CO2. And the goals of the problem are to find the work, the change in exergy, and the exergy destroyed. And with that, let's move right into it. So, the first part uh, is to find the work. And so, very simply, how do you find the work of a uh, paddle wheel spinning? Right, we use this as a uh, this is like a thermo one problem, which means that we have to find uh, the answer to this equation. This is the, I think, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the steady state balance or something for a system. If I'm wrong, uh, don't be mad, but I think that's what it is called. So U2 minus U1 is equal to Q minus W. And so, but remember for this problem, uh, this right here, this Q term, is zero because it is a insulated tank. Uh, I should, probably should have drawn that little lines around the tank, but yes, insulated tank, which means that we have negative work is equal to m u1 minus u2. And so what we have here, we have the first one, we have the mass value, right? That was given in the original problem statement. And we have a way to find the first U value because we are given a temperature. And this is CO2, so we're going to be using table A23. And A23 has carbon dioxide with respect to temperatures because it's an ideal gas in that, in, in that scenario. So we have a way to find U2, but we do not have a way to find U, or U, we don't have a, find a way, we don't have a way to find U2 yet, but we can find U1. So, how do we do that? Well, First, since we know that the table we're using is in respect to temperatures, we must find T2. And so, as I said, this is all being treated as an ideal gas loss, or at ideal gas. So we have P1, V1 is equal to M1, R1, T1. And then we have P2, V2 equals M2, R2, and T2. And now from this, we know this is a, a, a tank. The volume does not change, so these two are going to cancel out if we set them equal to each other, which we are. And then this next one, the masses do not change. Nothing leaves the boundary. So those are gone. These are obviously the same ideal gas constants. And then you are left with the following when you divide these over. You are left with P2 over P1 is equal to T2 over T1. And so we are trying to solve for T2. So if you solve for T2, you end up with P2 over P1 times T1 is equal to T2. And so if you insert the values that we have up here, 200, 150, and make sure this is in Kelvin, so 293 Kelvin, you will get T2 to be equal to 390.667 K. So that is important for the next part. And so what we do is, using that original equation I wrote, so Q minus W equals M U1 minus U2. Using this, we can now find our U values, and this is in table A23. Uh, it's the table that turns sideways because it's so long. It has temperatures ranging up to like like 4,000 Kelvin or something. So A23. And these are the properties of uh, select gases. And so what you're going to do is you're going to find U1 is equal to uh, the U value at T1, which in our problem 
is 293 Kelvin. And if you go down the column to 200, and you might, you're probably going to have to interpolate because it won't have 293 exactly, but this is what we have if you interpolate. You should get something similar to that. And this is in kilojoules per kilomole. And then we have U2 it is very similar. There is a 390 column or uh, uh, section. So you can find so this one pretty easily. And if you do that, you get 9718 uh, kilojoules per kilomole. And so these are our values we're going to be working with. So if you stick them into the equation, we have negative work is equal to m which our m from the beginning of the problem is 0.5 kilograms times our 6738.75 minus 9718 uh, and this value if you calculate it out you are going to get 0.5 times 6 Six seven three eight point seven five nine seven one eight. You get about thirty three, uh, uh, like thirty three hundred or so. But there's a problem with this answer, and the problem is is that we are in kilojoules per kilomole for these U values, and this is only kilograms. So the kilomoles will not cancel out here, and the answer needs to be in kilojoules. So what we have to do is we have to divide by the molecular weight or molecular mass of CO2 and that value is found from a table as well I think it's just after A23 uh, but I will make sure really fast yeah it is table A25 it is the thermochemical properties of selected substances so that means this changes then to 0.5 over 44.01 which is the molecular weight of CO2 I'm pretty sure yep and times 6738.25 minus 9718 and if you do this you end up getting a negative work of 33.5 eight four seven and since we know the work is going in like we were we know that this is spinning so we know that the work has to be negative here so if you just change this over we know that the work is going into the problem and if you see that these units will cancel out we have kilograms over uh, kilograms per kilomole I think uh, times uh, kilojoules per kilomole, which means uh, these two go away, right? This one comes up uh, to the top, which means these go away, and we are left with kilojoules. Uh, yeah, we're left with kilojoules only, which is what we want. So this is in kilojoules. Alright, so that is the answer to the first part, and we will be using that in the next part, so make sure we have that written down. And so part B asks for the change in exergy. So the change in exergy, this one has to do with the quantity we just found, so we have work, uh, is the part of the change of exergy, is uh, also takes into account P, which I think is boundary work. I think this is what this term would be, boundary work. I think this is V naught, V minus V naught. Uh, that might be it. I think it's V minus V naught. So let me change that real quick. V naught. So which is volume at the dead state, pressure at the dead state, uh, plus, or is this, a, oh, it's a minus. Minus T naught, which is temperature of the first state, I guess, in this situation, 
uh, delta s. And so, for this question, we obviously have work because we just found it. But this is a rigid tank, so is the volume changing? No. There is no change in volume, which is what this is. So that term is zero, which means this goes away. So our delta and this one right here, there is a change in uh, entropy because there is energy being put into the system. So there has to be some sort of change. In the work is going in, so this has to change. So like pressure and temperature went up, and so those are things that affect entropy. So we know that delta E x is now equal to work, our work value, plus, well, minus T naught delta S. So we have to find our delta S value. And since we're using this as an ideal gas, we can use the delta S of ideal gas equation, which is, uh, if you recall from previous chapters, it is CV times LN of T2 over T1 and it's plus R LN of V2 over V1 and so what we can do to change this equation is that we don't have this volume is the same V1 V2 over V1 is the same so this becomes 1 and LN of 1 is 0 so which means this all goes away so which means we are left with delta S being equal to CV LN of T2 over T1 and if you work this out there is a CV given at the beginning of the problem at 0.65 and your LN of T2 over T1 which is 390 divided by 293 you should get a value of 0.18 six nine nine let me double check that really fast before I give poor information yes so this right here is your delta s in I think this is kilojoules per, per kilomole I think is what it would be kilomole Kelvin something like that. But as we know, this unit, this work is in kilojoules. So this has to be in kilojoules. We have to to get these two to subtract or add, we have to have them in the same units. So uh and there's also a mass associated with this as well. It's m there should be an m because remember this is also this is not per mass. This is mass multiplied in. So that means to get rid of we have to have the mass multiplied into this as well. So we're going to do that on the next slide. So delta S before I forget is point one eight six nine nine. And so let me write this uh, whole equation out. Delta E X is equal to work uh, minus T naught delta s and this is times the mass as well uh, but we also have to uh, divide by I think the molecular weight but let me, let me th make sure of that before I once again give bad information <laughs> No, we do not. We do not have to because there there is no there is no kilomoles there. So this part is wrong. Let me get rid of that. This is in kilograms, kilojoules per kilogram, kilogram Kelvin. All right. So now that I've changed that mistake, so let's go ahead and insert the values into here. So delta E X is equal to our value of work, which is thirty three point eight four seven minus our T naught for this one is our first temperature which is 293 Kelvin times make sure it's in Kelvin 
six nine nine times 0.5 kilograms, which is the mass we have at the beginning, because we have to get rid of that mass on the bottom. And the Kelvin multiplied in, will get rid, or it will get rid of the Kelvin, this will get rid of the kilograms, we'll just be left with kilojoules, which is what we want. So delta EX, if you do this calculation, is equal to about 6.452 kilojoules. And so that is the answer to part B. And I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide just to, just for the sake of having more space. And so the final part, part C, asks for the exergy destroyed of the system. So the exergy destroyed. Exergy destroyed uh, is part of the change in exergy equation. Uh, if you rewrite it in a different way. So if you write it as exergies rather than, uh, I guess, energies, you should have something to the effect of this. Let me write it out. Is equal to exergy of work, uh, or it's Q. I think it's exergy of heat minus exergy of work. Uh, I think minus exergy destroyed. Yeah, minus exergy destroyed. And so obviously we are trying to solve for the exergy destroyed term. So what do we have here? Well, we have the exergy of work, right? We have the exergy of uh, the change of exergy. We just found that. And we know that there's no heat leaving or anything crossing the boundary, so the exergy with of Q is nothing. So for now we can then just solve over. So we have I will move the exergy to the other side. Exergy destroyed of the system is equal to uh, negative exergy of work minus exergy uh, or delta e x. So if we insert our values there we then get uh, our exergy of work, which is uh, 33, so negative 33.847. But remember, this is also already negative because of what we did earlier. So these two obviously cancel out to make a positive. And then it's uh, minus the change in exergy, which is 6.452. And if you do that, you end up getting something around 27.4 kilojoules. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically what this means is, is that this system, through the input of work, changed, or it, there was an X, basically, there could, the, the total energy, or the system could have made a little bit more energy. That's what we're showing here. 27.4 kilojoules was kind of lost due to the process and so uh, and that would be the process of spinning the paddle wheel so maybe if you used heat here instead of work you might have uh, have a smaller exergy destroyed but uh, that's more of a conceptual question I guess but I think that is the last part of the question uh, I hope you learned something and see you next time